welcome to Camp Monday Fun Day. Uh, today we have the Suffolk Master Gardeners here and they are going to be reading a couple of books to us as well as showing us how to make egg curtain caterpillars. Good afternoon. Welcome to another Camp Monday Fun Day. I'm Wanda Gerard. I'm from the Suffolk Master Gardener program. And if you wanted to know what that was, well, we are a volunteer program that uh, obviously is here for the city of Suffolk. We're under the Virginia Cooperative Extension. And um, we are a volunteer program where we teach citizens of Suffolk and maybe a little bit beyond Suffolk how to be a, a good gardener or a good steward of the land. So um, again, we are a volunteer program and that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to do a little volunteering to teach you uh, something fun. We're going to start with reading uh, the book called Right This Very Minute. So I'll go back and forth with reading and showing you some pictures. Uh, and then we're going to uh, look at another book. So Right This Very Minute, it was written by Lisa Delphiston. I won't ask you to repeat that. Okay, I hope you've had breakfast because this might make you hungry. What's that you say you're hungry for breakfast? Right this very minute? Well, then you need a farmer. You have the stories of so many right here on your table. And we're going to talk about these different food items and how they get to your table. Right this very minute, in a citrus grove, a grower tests his oranges to see if they are ripe. When the fruit is ready, the harvesting crew will pick the oranges, which will be squeezed into the juice you drink in the morning. So that's how orange juice comes to your table. Right this very minute, in a new field on a wheat farm, a farmer drills furrows the perfect depth for the seed. A furrow is with the ground, you make like a little indentation or a little ditch and they can adjust the equipment so that it goes to the perfect depth so that it makes planting a lot easier. I grew up on a farm, so I knew that. Your pancakes were made with the wheat that came after this grain was harvested. And then uh, it was made into the flour and again became pancakes. Pancake flour in here. There we go. Right this very minute, in a sugar bush filled with maple trees, a sugar maker replaces an old collection of buckets with a new tubing system to carry the maple sap to a syrup tank. The sap will be boiled down in and evaporated until it becomes thick and sweet like the maple syrup you have put on your pancakes. Now most of us know that maple syrup comes from the New England area. It's a little colder up there and uh, it does something to um, the trees make better syrup uh, because of those temperature changes. So there we see them going through the process of making maple syrup. What's that you say? You'd like a snack right this very minute? Well, again, you need a farmer. You have the knowledge of so many right here in your hands. So we're going to talk a little bit about some snacks. Are you getting hungry yet? Right this very minute, as the sun sets on a cranberry marsh, a grower starts protecting the crop from a frost. The grower will be up all night checking the sprinklers that keep the plants from freezing. Also that the cranberries can be part of your trail mix. I'm pretty sure you've had cranberries in trail mix. Right this very minute on a southern farm, a peanut farmer installs soil sensors to make sure the fields aren't too wet or too dry. These sensors help the farmer decide when and how much water, how much water to give these sensitive plants. Now this isn't in the book, but here in Suffolk, 
we have a lot of peanuts being grown. So hopefully you uh, experienced um, some of the information about growing peanuts by going to the Peanut Fest uh, because they have some of the equipment there and they talk a lot about how peanuts grow. What's that you say? It's time for lunch right this very minute. Guess what? You need a farmer. You have the hard work of so many right here in your lunchbox. Now you see the young girl is where eating a sandwich. That comes from the wheat that we talked about earlier. Right this very minute, a dairy farmer tends the cows. See the cows? Lots of different color cows. The cheese in your sandwich was made with milk from the cows that must be milked at least twice every day whether it's a weekday, a Saturday, a Sunday, or even a holiday. How many of you knew that milk came from a cow? And from the cow, it goes to the dairy. And from the dairy, it goes to probably a bigger dairy. And then it is put into the milk jugs delivered to your store. Right this very minute, farmers till and test the soil for nutrients to make sure it's healthy before planting seeds that will grow into the long, crunchy carrots. Right this very minute, an apple grower works with a beekeeper to bring beehives into the orchard. There's a big business in the United States where farmers drive beehives around on tractor trailers to a lot of these big farms, especially out in California for growing almonds. You might find almonds in your trail mix. Hundreds of thousands of honeybees will pollinate these pale pink blossoms, helping each tree grow many bushels of apples for you to enjoy. And from apples, we get apples and we get applesauce and apple pie, so lots of good things. What's that you say? You're ready for dinner? Right this very minute? then you need a farmer. You have the pride of so many right here on your plate. Let's talk about what's for dinner. Right this very minute, a cattle rancher moves the herd to a wide pasture to graze. She cares for the cows and welcomes their calves into the world. When the, when the calves are old enough, they will move to the new pasture or a feeding yard before they are harvested for the beef that will be made into your hamburger. Right this very minute, a farmer plans a crop rotation schedule to keep the soil healthy and to grow more of the very best vegetables, like the potato you topped with broccoli and with cheese. Remember, cheese is dairy. That would have come from the milk from the cow. Right this very minute, some farmers prepare produce for delivery to the grocery store and others in a box, and they box it up so they can sell it at a farmer's market. And you probably see pictures of lettuce growing here, maybe cabbage. Those are two kinds of produce. Before lettuce and tomatoes ever get tossed into a salad or put on top of a hamburger, they must travel from the farm to the hungry customers. What's that you say you'd like to have dessert right this very minute? Then you need a farmer. Sometimes it takes a whole family to make the farming business work. You have the dedication of so many of those farmers, again, right here on this page, so you can begin to eat them with your fork. Right this very minute, a grower checks the weather forecast in a family-owned strawberry patch while the workers help hundreds of visitors pick their own strawberries. Perhaps you've gone picking strawberries. There's several pick your own 
farms here in Suffolk. Right this very minute, a family checks their backyard coop to make sure that the chickens have enough feed and fresh water. Then they collect the eggs that get made into foods like the shortcake in your bowl. It takes a little bit more than eggs to make that shortcake. Remember flour comes from wheat. What's that you say? You want to grow your own food right this very minute? Well, then you need to think like a farmer. You can help plant a garden right here in your community. Right this very minute, you and your friends, family, and neighbors can work together to choose which crops to grow in your gardens. In a few months, you will enjoy healthy snacks and meals that you've made with the fruits and vegetables that you can harvest yourself. There are so many things you can grow in these gardens. Every single day of every single year, farmers tend their crops, care for their animals, and work hard to feed their families and yours. The next time you eat your breakfast, have a snack, eat lunch, dinner, or dessert, remember that somewhere right this very minute, there's a farmer to thank so you have this delicious food. And if someday you decide to become a farmer, right that very minute, you'll be doing your part to feed the world too. Thank you very much. That is our book titled, Right This Very Minute. Um, I am now going to show you a craft and then we'll come back and read another book. The craft, uh, the, the components to make the craft will be available at the library. Uh, you just have to, have to check the Suffolk Library website uh, to know the times when you can go pick those up. But we're going to make a caterpillar. And this is a really simple caterpillar. Um, again, the parts will be available at the library, but you might have them around your house as well. And for this, I took an egg carton and I like to use a styrofoam egg carton that probably would just go in the trash. So I'm sort of recycling it just a little bit, but I cut the egg carton. So I have a section of three. Of course, you could have a section of six if you wanted to. But then I take perhaps a toothpick and I poke little holes along the side if I want to give my caterpillar legs. And uh, this one does not have legs, but here this one does. And we're going to make one. And so to make one, you probably just want to use simple things. And pipe cleaners are the easiest. And um, I take, and again, I had a little hole. So I put the pipe cleaner through the hole. Sometimes it's a little, a little challenging. Um, and again, you can do whatever you want to to make your own caterpillar, but I'm gonna do mine like this. And um, as you know, a caterpillar is from the insect family and insects have six legs. So uh, by doing it this way, I am going to automatically give my caterpillar four legs. And now I'm going to come into the back I'm going to try. I didn't work too easy. Uh, I am going to do it this way. Again, any way you want to do this is going to be your caterpillar. And depending on your age, uh, maybe you need an adult to help you or maybe you don't. But we're going to pretend those are legs. Okay, so um, and already I got a head start. You can see an insect has antennae. So another pipe cleaner, and then here's some little fancy doodads on the end. Now, my caterpillar does not have googly eyes on it, but this one does. It also has some dicker, a sticker, maybe some raffia. Um, the whole idea is you're recycling something to have a little bit of fun, and it's going to help you remember that caterpillars are important. If you want to know why, 
Well, caterpillars become the moths and the butterflies that we see flying around. And they are just one kind of pollinator that helps pollinate the food that we eat. Hello again. We're now going to read Anywhere Farm. And this book was written by Phyllis Root. So, let's get started. Anywhere Farm. Lots of introductory pages here. For an anywhere farm, here's all that you need. Soil and sunshine, some water, and a seed. Fat seed or sinny seed, pointy or round, tenderly tuck it down into the ground. Then you watch and you wait, you water, you weed, your seed will sprout out at its own seedy speed. So here we have a child with a little seedling that has come up after she's planted it. And you'll have an anywhere, anywhere farm. It's probably in her backyard. So where can you plant your anywhere farm? An old empty lot makes a good growing plot, but a pan or a bucket, a pot or a shoe, a bin or a tin, or a window will do. Plant a farm in a crate. Plant a farm in a cup. Plant a farm in a box on a balcony, 10 stories up. You get the idea. You can pretty much plant a seed anywhere. Plant a farm in a truck, in a box, on a bike. Plant an anywhere farm, anywhere that you like. Anywhere that you have some soil, some seed, some sunshine, and some water, that's all you need for your anywhere, anywhere, anywhere farm. Here you can see we have a frying pan, a shoe, a bucket, a little hole in the ground, some crates. So you can plant anywhere and they're showing that you actually can do this and make it work. What can you plant on your anywhere farm? Kale in a pail, corn in a horn, beets and zucchini or oregano and beans, gymka, broccoli, radishes, and greens, tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, and peas. On your anywhere farm, plant whatever you please. I do want to say that when you are planting something, I want you to wear a pair of gloves, if at all possible. That keeps your hands protected from the soil that you are working with. Who might come to visit your Anywhere Farm? Get your thinking caps on. You might see a monarch, a ladybug, a bee, hummingbirds, cardinals, even a fat chickadee. Lots of nature visitors will probably come check out your farm. Your neighbors might come. When they see what you've grown, they might want an anywhere farm of their very own. Isn't that exciting that your idea might encourage somebody else to grow something? You might give them some seeds that they might plant in a can, a carton, a wash tub, or that old prime. In a boat or a boot or right in their yard, anybody can do it 
You showed them. It's not hard. With your farm in a basket and mine on a chair, with soil and sunshine and water and care, one day all our anywhere farms anywhere might turn into an everywhere farm. Everywhere. Look how lush everything looks. It's because several people started their own little farm. Where does it all start? What do you need? Just one farmer, you and one little seed. And here we see the young farmer laying on the ground, looking up at the sunflower that he has grown. Thank you for joining us today. Again, um, for more information on programs that the library has, and for picking up a kit to make a caterpillar, please visit the Suffolk Public Library website. That is SuffolkPublicLibrary.com. Thanks. Have a nice summer. Thanks to the, thank you to the Suffolk Master Gardeners for that book and craft. Um, and thank you for joining us. And look at our. Make sure to check out our calendar for next week's Camp Monday Fun Day.